Hi guys, this is a video for those of you looking to buy a power supply and we're going to show you what's important when you're looking for a power supply and how not to be fooled by cheap power supplies. So, uh, first things first, you should always be getting advice off the internet rather than in a shop. Uh, one to avoid is Maplins, um, if you're in the UK. These sell, and this is an example from Maplins, these sell these low quality horrible power supplies and we're going to be showing you why these are so bad in a minute. So, right, what makes a good power supply? First of all, the wattage. Uh, so you, you want to check uh, how much power you need to run your system. There's a few like calculators you can get on the internet that give you a rough idea of that. Um, but wattage alone means nothing. This is uh, marketed as a 650 watt power supply. This is a 520 watt power supply. Now, my, my system at the minute uh, draws about 520 watts. I've been using this with no problems. If I put this 650 watt power supply in, it would undoubtedly uh, die, basically, because this cannot provide the right amount of power. Now what you need to check, these will be on the back of the box, you can find this information on the internet, or on the power supply itself. So, right, here is a good quality power supply, if I put this up to the camera, you can see there's a table just like this. Now, what this is telling you is the values of the various rails. You get a 3.3 volt rail, a 5 volt rail, and uh, 12 volt rails. Now you can get you can get from one rail to four rails, and the number of rails isn't necessarily important. The other ones you don't have to worry about so much. Now the most important rails are your 12 volt rails because that's what powers your CPU and your graphics cards. The 5 volt rails and 3.3 volt rails aren't particularly important uh, when it comes to powering your computer. Uh, as you can see. This is a 520 watt power supply, and in total, it outputs 408 watts through the 12 volt rails combined. Now that's uh, that's very important because uh, obviously your 12 volt rails are going to be drawing the most. Uh, you can calculate this yourself if you like. All you have to do, you take the voltage and you times it by the ampage, and that gives you the wattage. Okay, so that's that's kind of what a table of a good power supply should look like. Now we'll move on to this cheap brand one. Now what we can see is here, first of all, sorry, it's upside down. Was that other one upside down? I think it may have been. Sorry if it was. Um, yeah, anyway. What you can see first of all is here, they, don't, they include the overall wattage rather than the wattage for the rails, and there's a reason for this. Um, what we can see here is they've got the 3.3 volt rails and the 5 volt rails have 30 amps, which is a lot. However, when we move to the 12 volt rails, they only have 16 amps each, which um, works out at just over 300 watts of, uh, of um, 12 volt power. Now, that compared to the 400 saying on a 520 watt total power supply, and this, so, power supply that is 520 watts and is good quality, provides more power over the 12 watt rails than a supposedly 650 watt cheap brand one. Now um, we can also see where they've worked out this uh, this overall wattage, they've also included the minus 12 volt rail and uh, this this uh, 5 volt one. These aren't important at all and should not be included in the overall wattage. Um, so it's, it's very misleading and if you're asking Chuck to say oh yeah it's fine it's got the right wattage don't believe that, it's rubbish. If I put this in my system, it would blow it up. Right, okay. Uh, now we're going to show you a demonstration on uh, on how these are just as bad as I've been saying. Now, when you're choosing a power supply, it's an important factor. Um, it's, not, it's not just about the power, it's about the quality of the components. Now if I just set this camera up. Yeah. Um, and one of the the most important of these quality factors that are measurable is the 12 volt ripple and voltage stability. This basically means um, how close is the uh, the actual voltage to the stated voltage. So, is it on the 12 volt rail? Are you getting 11.5 volts, for example? The other one is ripple. Uh, the ripple is uh, well, basically, if you if you're doing a graph, the um, the voltage should 
uh, in an ideal world, be a straight line, but obviously that's not always practical. So these very little, uh, uh, very little bumps in the power on a graph, and um, you sh you shouldn't you should need an oscilloscope to measure this on looking at the millivolts. But unfortunately, you can actually measure that on a on a uh, multimeter in this case because it's that bad. So right, what we're going to do? We've got a, a fluke multimeter here. It's ca properly calibrated, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see the display. Right. Okay. Lovely. So right. Um. First of all, I'm going to test this Cool Master power supply. Good quality one. So plug it in. We've got on the 24 pin. Uh, we've uh, put a jumper across. That'll uh, that'll start up the power supply. Because without that, it wouldn't start up. So I start on the power supply, and I'm going to measure it uh, for simplicity's sake on this four pin. Uh, CPU connector, 4 pin ATX connector. So I'm going to get me, get my probes. Top ones are positive, and the so let me get that in picture. The top pins are positive, and the bottom ones are ground. So I pop that in there. Not going to be able to see what I'm doing with the pins, but pop it on. Sorry, I better set it up first. All right. So it's on 12 volts on uh, sorry voltage DC. Pop that in. Pop that in. And as we can see, it's 12.21. Now, that's um, that's that's acceptable. That's not too far off the 12 volts. Oh, and I'm uh, moving about a bit here. Let me sort it out. Yeah, there we go. But as you can see, the most important thing is there's no movement in the voltage you're seeing. Oh, no. You are seeing movement because I keep uh, accidentally popping my probes out. Sorry about that. There we go. So yeah, that's always a, a, a constant uh, voltage as far as we can see on the multimeter. Now that's good. That means it's a stable, good quality power supply. Right. Turn that off. Now we're going to move on to this dodgy little thing. Plug it in. Put my little jumper in. Jumpers in. Power it up. Right, okay. So we can all see that. I'll get my. Do the same again. So for 12 volt rail, 4 pin uh, ATX power. On the top, that there, and as we can see, that is just not standing still. That is absolutely terrible. This should not be allowed on the market. This is disgusting. I mean, that is. This should only be measurable on an oscilloscope, and as we can see, it's dropping between ten volts. And I think when I when I measured it earlier, it was around um, ten point six or seven to. 11.8 so not only does it not even reach um, 12 volts on idle it's not stable and I'm pretty sure if we if we put this through some more vigorous testing on load it would not meet ATX specifications this this is uh, terrible and uh, it's people that don't really know what they're looking for in a power supply they just look at the wattage um, they're gonna buy this and be misled by uh, the people reselling it, in this case Maplins and uh, the, the manufacturer. So beware, do not buy cheap power supplies because this is what you get and this will damage your system. Even go for a lower a lower wattage one uh, that is more quality such as this and uh, you're, you're safe. But this thing, I doubt this has much protection so putting, your, putting this in your system is very dangerous. So. Thanks for watching and bear this in mind when you're looking to buy your next power supplier.